<laughs> Can you believe uh, that we're together today after, you know, minus bumping into the airport on our business travel after 14 years? No. After 14 years, it's pretty amazing to have Alex Yukoulis in my podcast room for I'm Not Mad at You to discuss probably one of the most important topics thus far as a podcaster to talk about business and sales. Well, I appreciate your kind words. And why don't we do this? Why don't we um, share the notes from our discussion okay. with your audience? Okay. But I got to ask you one thing. Yes, sir. You... You reminded me of a conversation that you and I had many, many, many years ago that actually caused a moment of pause for you. As a matter of fact, maybe a little bit of a moment of confusion because the intent and the effect of what I told you wasn't quite aligning. And I'd love for you to tell that story. Absolutely. You're my honey versus vinegar guy. (laughs) And to be fair, we, you know, we, we did this podcast. We agreed to do this because we wanted it to be valuable content for those that one day will listen. And we both agree that relatability is a very key factor. And we were in a working capacity and I received an email from you and I didn't receive a lot of emails from you at that time. It wasn't like you and I had regular email exchange. Mm -hmm. And we must have had a client meeting together. And I got an email subsequently from you. We were in different departments that said, Stacy, you will attract more bees with honey versus vinegar. (laughs) And first of all, to be fair, I think I was 29 or 30 years old. I didn't know that saying. So I didn't even know what you were telling me. And because we weren't in a management capacity, you weren't my boss, Mm -hmm. you know, I didn't understand the purpose of the email. So I had to take this email (laughs) and walk around (laughs) other people in the office and ask them what he even meant. I'm like, what did, what did Alex mean with this? What is he, what is he trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. And we were fortunate enough that one of our colleagues explained to me that, you know, Stacy, sometimes your abrasiveness, while it may be correct, you may not end up attracting what you want, even right. though you're right, right, or even though you're valid, you're not, you're not being relatable. Right. While not understanding what that meant to me then, the really neat thing that we're doing this today is that I don't know when it started making sense to me, Alex. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, it certainly, even when, even when I was told what it meant, I was more mad at you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was frustrated with you. It was the... Uh, the because it hurt. Because, yeah. you know, I, I, what, what, what we both find, you're a consultant, I'm a consultant. When yeah. you actually have said something to people that hits home, mm-hmm. that really is something that's an area of opportunity for them, right? it typically doesn't yeah. feel so good. And it goes back to what I said earlier, it's the intent and the effect. It my changed inten- my life. My attentions were honorable. A hundred percent. The effective way it was received was, but maybe that little, that little slap, if you'll call it, of uh, reason. Um, has helped you and what you're doing today. I'm sure that, I'm sure it, that it, it has. So. There's, or you wouldn't have I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had you in this room right now. In right. fact, if anything, I told you this while we were discussing notes. Yeah. There's probably three different quotes that three different individuals have told me in my career that I remembered, and that was one of them. Everybody comes into sales situations at such, a, at such different places. For instance, at a lot of, a lot of the cases... There's the top line, you know, and you're going in and you're working with high level C-suite executives and it's, 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 it's innate, mm-hmm. right? And then there's the, the cold call. There's all the way down to right. the cold call. Ne- either one, no matter what, if you and I as sales individuals walk in for the first time meeting those people and we couldn't do homework, whatever, mm-hmm. we're most likely no matter going to try to find something that we can relate to. Right. It's, it's being able to ask questions. And continue to ask questions till you start getting the answers that form other questions so that you can you know, get to that relatability. Business development, growing your business, is the lifeblood of your sustainability. But you also have to make the necessary investments. Correct. And if you don't make the investments, I don't think you'll ever have the outcomes that you need. Now, investments aren't necessarily all about money, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You have to invest in the right people with the right talent that can send your message. Um, One of the things I know we talked about was some of our own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And I started this business close to four years ago. 
and we talk about spending money to make money and it's an adage i mean i went to business college right, right. we have heard it we said it to clients we mm-hmm. i say it to clients today and 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 started a business of my own at 27 and it didn't work and started my second business at 47 mm-hmm. and in the first business i didn't know the money to spend or have the money to spend and didn't understand what that meant in this business in all vulnerability and reality, at 18 months, it was troublesome. Mm-hmm. We had had clients. We had had success. We were starting to build some SOPs and starting to see that the process would work. But I didn't have sales outreach. Mm-hmm. Not the way I was supposed to. I had clients. And so I was like, okay, I got to anchor clients. So let's prove the process. Let's prove the system. Right. Well, 18 months in, I had, as they all say, black swan events. Things you were not predicting. A client, boof. Mm-hmm. You know, went away. They didn't like you. You got in a fight, whatever. Right. You, whatever the reasons were. And it became painfully clear that I was not spending the time on and money mm-hmm. on resourcing business development. I heard an old phrase in a sales training class probably 35 years ago, and it was called WIFM. W-I-I-F-M. Okay. And the uh, sales trainer gave us, a, it seemed like a day, but it was probably 30 minutes to <laughs> crack the code on what Wiffle meant. Okay. And what it means is what's in it for, for me? me? What's in it for me? And if, if you're just talking about your company all the time and you're not trying to weave in how that's important to the person that you're talking to, chances are, you're, and, and heaven forbid, those, you're talking to somebody who's one of your top eight that you really want to have a client relationship with. Let me point out something here. Absolutely. I have a company called I'm Not Mad at You. Mm -hmm. And Alex, the way we operate is we actually are trying to psychologically almost beat them down as quickly as we can Mm -hmm. to find out what their opportunities are so that we can tell them almost immediately what is going to be in it for them, if that makes sense. I have a very, as you know, and you've known me, and it is back to the bee versus, you know, honey versus vinegar, is I don't like to waste time. And so in that, I'm pretty straightforward, and I hope most of us are, and like, let's get to what you want out of this. Mm -hmm. I I believe our process for I'm not mad at you is is self-serving in that time aspect. Mm -hmm. Because the first question we ask them is, what's your greatest challenge? So automatically, they're already being vulnerable by telling you what their greatest challenge is. If someone's willing to go there, you have a really good chance of then finding out to your point what's valuable to them. Mm -hmm. If they tell you my greatest challenge is X, then why deviate and talk about anything else, right? right? If they told me their biggest challenge is that we're having a really hard time getting our sales team to deliver and convey who we are and the value proposition. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't immediately then talk to that to that perspective client about executive leadership. You know what I'd be talking to them? You know what's going to be valuable to that person? How could I help their salespeople deliver their message better? So I don't even talk about my other nine yeah, attributes I do as a company. And that's and, where and you that's, meet that's, them that's where... Hard to do because so what do we just tell these people? Like, so we've been talking here for like 30 minutes. Right. What have we just told them the three most important things are? I'll give you my three. I think if I was a business owner, uh, an entrepreneur, and I was trying to find new sales, profitable new sales growth uh, for my company, the first thing I would want to do is that anybody that I would ask to go out and represent my company needs to be a very, very good student of our products and brands and what we're trying to get accomplished, a very good student of the industry. And of the industry, I mean, you need to hijack your competition's presentations in your mind. But what is your meaningful point of difference? And I know that when you share your three with me, you're going to share the meaningful <laughs> point of difference with I'm not mad at sure. you, and I, I, love, I love to hear that. Secondly, resources are limited. Time resources, money resources, et cetera. So what I would suggest is that we don't look at the quantity of prospective calls that we're making, but we take a look at the quality of the calls. Now, how do, you, how do you get there? Well, you've got to really take a look at your target list. And instead of taking a shotgun approach to go out and talk to anybody who will listen to you, have a rifled approach. You know, you've already figured out what your core business is. We talked about that earlier. Where do you want to compete? 
find out where your your most I would say high probability clients reside yep. and then start start your business outreach uh, you know to them and I, I would say that that's that's point one and, and, and point number two I would say point number three is understanding that this is going to be an investment yeah also be humble and realize that even though you own the organization you may not be the best person to go out and find new business yep okay uh, but i'd love to hear your three absolutely and 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 obviously we didn't come together because we're that far apart on what we believed probably the three most important valuable things that we could share in a podcast about sales and business development would be uh, I go back to the honey versus vinegar in our beginning of our relationship. I think one of the most important things of, of I'm going to say three as well, mm-hmm. is being relatable. Yep. And it's so hard to define that. It's so hard to make somebody be that that's not. So to your point, if you really are the owner of the company or you're in, responsible for the business development of the company, and it isn't something that you're going to easily be relatable to a as you said, it's not a large swath of people because it's your target audience. Mm-hmm. But if you really aren't going to be relatable to your target audience, maybe you need help or right. you know you outsource those things mm-hmm. like that. But being relatable is such an innocuous little thing. And as I tell everyone, I always tell this story to everyone, I've always used geography. Mm-hmm. I've been very fortunate to start traveling from the time I was six years old with athletics and then athletics through 22 and then in my jobs in all my companies I did nothing but travel Mm -hmm. and I will tell you I've used geography as a relatability point always always if you've been to their little tiny town they're from and you can tell them about their little local store it just it just opens up the dialogue and they're open they're hearing you again right so relatability, and that's, to be fair, the reason you're in here is because the, the quotes you told me. Mm-hmm. And, and because up to that point in my life, everything I had achieved, I could be the best, and that was good enough. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize when I flipped my sales hat on, which is where the beginning of me being trained was that moment with you, mm-hmm. was that you can't just be the best. The second thing, and it's, it's, it's probably in any textbook, it's probably the first thing, but it's you have to spend money to make money. And that's really hard, especially when you are coming into some of these companies when they're in not the best financial situation. And so the idea of you telling them, like, you've just hired help mm-hmm. and you're paying for that help. And now I'm going to tell you, I need you to spend more money over here. But, but we're going to spend smart money. And we're going to tell you that we believe that if we spend $20,000 over here, we can deliver $80,000 or whatever return on investment that we need for your business. Mm-hmm. But you've got to spend it. You've, you've got to understand, as you said, industry data, industry competition. So where is your money best spent? But you can't be sitting there on your hands spending no money right. or no time or no energy, whatever it is that you choose. Right. And some of the tactics are free. You know, like the spending money is not always an actual dollar value tactic. Mm-hmm. And then the last, you know, as, as you covered so thoroughly, is you have to know your audience and have a value proposition. And I've given this example since starting this company from the beginning. I represented some of the largest brands in the world. I never had that great of stories to tell. I mean, really, when you sold... Advil, when you sold M&M Mars, Mm -hmm. they didn't give you that good of a story to tell. They said you sell the number one brand in the category. So you walked into someone's office and you said, here I am with Snickers. It's the number one chocolate bar in the category. So take it. And the data says, (laughs) but but what most small to mid-sized businesses don't understand is you have to create a story and be that relatable and build a story for your business. And have that story have a point of differentiation mm-hmm. than everybody else in your industry. So like you said, if you're in construction, what makes your construction? Everyone can build a house, right? right. Well, what, what makes us different is actually in the estimation process. We have this state-of-the-art estimation process that 99% of the time when we're finished with your job, it costs what we told you it estimated. And you know construction, it's never, you know, we're right. never on budget. So define it, and then define it for every single person in your organization to be able to also define, you know, and 
that's probably it. That's powerful. That's powerful. <laughs> Those are three. I think I think we came to the same place, and I, that's right. I can't think of any other place to end it. You well, know, we'll send it here, but uh, agree to come back and continue the story. Absolutely. All right. All right, and we'll go into more detail if anyone <laughs> wants more. Right. You bet we will. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.